Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're just going to do an update on the Jeep and the what's been going on with the work over the winter. I want to get you in here because we're at the stage now where some big parts are going to go back in and I want to show you what we've done before they go back in and you can't see all of the work. Okay, here we are then. So before I put the air cleaner back in, I wanted to show you the new ignition wiring because that's all finished now and we've actually had the Jeep fired up on the new wiring. So you can see underneath here, we've got a nice new electrical board which was missing. All of the cables are run through from the new harness are fitted to it. You've got a nice lead here fitted to the solenoid at the bottom because I don't have a uh, foot starter like a traditional Jeep at the factory would. You see the solenoid down there. I have fitted a foot starter to it now so that the public can see it and you can explain to them the uh, way that they would have been done at the factory. But I didn't want to wire a foot starter into it because they're not brilliant. They're just, they're just not good. Okay, so here you can see we've got a nice shiny new coil. You hopefully make that out for all the cables if the focus is playing ball. So we didn't initially mean to change the coil when doing the wiring. I wanted to use the old coil on the new wiring just to make sure everything was fine. And then I was going to change it. But when we come to putting in the new wires, this wire specifically, we found that the threads on that terminal there on the old coil were completely messed up. The actual You couldn't actually get the nut off. So we had to remove the coil with the wire on it because that's just wrecked basically i don't know what's happened to it. the um all of the F bit on the end of the coil on the wire here this is all turned to like goo and melted up and everything so that coil had some sort of malfunction at some point so we put a new coil in so here you can see the back end of my alternator because i don't have a uh, generator like a normal out of the factory jeep would have so we've got two wires here we've got this nice new shiny one that was put in this runs to the uh, ignition and then this black one here is an additional cable. We used an old bit of the old harness to make this because you cut them down, the bit that was under the uh, sealant tape was all basically like new still. So that's really quite usable. So we've been cutting bits up to make wires. So we made this cable, this goes to the ignition light, which goes off when the alternator kicks in so you know you're charging. So now that's all of the ignition wiring done and I can put the air filter back here which would have stopped me from showing you all this really we didn't have to change the battery cables because they were brand new a couple of years ago when we did the initial overhaul also whilst we were at it, we had the distributor cap off i cleaned up the rotor arm cleaned up a few bits in there so that's all nice and clean ready to go now as well so moving to the other side of the engine bay you can see that all of the wiring for the back lights has now been removed or most of the wiring has been removed in general and we've got a nice new set of grommets been put in here we're now at the stage where we're ready to put the new main body harness in, which runs from the mainly from the light switch all the way to the back lights at, at the other end of the Jeep. And if you drop down here, you can see that the steering column and everything has been reassembled. The new horn wiring is ready to go in onto this plate here. We have tested it, that worked. Hopefully that'll stay working. If it doesn't, I'll just have to take the column off again and add a bit more insulation to the wire. It's very easy for that cable in there from the horn to short out onto the actual column which makes your horn go off all the time. But um, we've encased it in silicon and it seems to be working really well. So fingers crossed that'll keep working that way. And round to the front, you can see that the column after it's nice sand down and spray up is looking a lot nicer than it did. You can see all of the nasty dents and everything, but that's part of its age. We've got the uh, clamp back on. We've got a lot of paint touch up to do. You can see there where that chip off when you're doing things. And the uh, cover and the seal and everything down here has all been wired up and put back into place. Well, I say wired up, there's no bloody wires. I meant screwed back in. Our missing mirror has now been mounted on. The original holes have been re-drilled. I think that's all looking pretty nice. Probably see about doing something about these. These holes are where a uh, M38 or CJ mirror had been bolted onto it when I got it. But we've got a nice new mirror now, finally after many years. Hello. And underneath here, everything's looking pretty empty. You can see we've got the start switch down there that is just for show, just when we talk to people. This cable hanging down here is what takes part of the light switch, which is ready to be put back in. And you can see we've fitted in an inline fuse here because light switch have a big circuit breaker on it. Um, that didn't come with one. They cost 25, 30 quid to get hold of one. Um, and if they blow, then you need a whole new circuit breaker. So instead, I'm going to be just using this little inline one here, that'll be hit up in the dash, you'll never know it was there. And that's just been soldered to the new harness cable nice and tidy. Another job that's still to do is, you see we've got this cable here where a lot of things go into a bolt. Now that's basically, the red cable comes from the ignition and that supplies power to everything that's on the bolt. 
So this black one here goes to the coil. This one here goes to the ignition light. And uh, this one here goes to the fuel gauge. But obviously this isn't the ideal way to have them. It's very, it does work very well, but it's not really good, is it? You don't want to be having stuff like that. So I'm going to find myself a suitable junction box at some point and get all these cables routed into the junction box. This will also be where the uh, indicator circuit will get its power from. Speaking of indicators, you might remember that there's a big old Lucas indicator switch that was bolted into there that I absolutely hated. Well, that is gone. And that big chunky old out of place looking switch has been replaced with this little toggle switch, which I look, think looks quite good really. You just flick it one way or the other. That's not wired in yet, obviously. And that's just hidden under the uh, blackout drive light that's been fitted. This won't be getting wired in anytime soon. I'm just putting it in for historical reference again, because that's what the Jeep should have. If you had to come over here, this is where the light switch was. This hole will be getting plugged in. And then the new push-pull light switch will be going in the original hole where it should be. Moving over, you can see that the ignition, which was in this hole here, has been moved. And we have re-drilled the original ignition hole in between the hand throttle and the choke. That's going to be the key ignition. I'll spray up the outside part of it OD green so it looks a bit more authentic. That's one of the little concessions that have been made to have this as a more usable Jeep rather than having it completely factory wired. So at least that's in the right place now. And that little red light you see above is the ignition light. So when you put the ignition on that glows and when you uh, start the engine and then give it a rev and make the alternator kick in it goes out. And if the alternator stops working that light comes back on. So one little problem we have found is that these cables here which go to the master cylinder, they go to the little brake switch on the back. Um, they connect to the brake switch by just basically like a bullet connector that goes into a tension held hull, basically. Now these two that you can see have been repaired over time are actually connected into a plastic wiring block, one of the uh, horrible white square things that look completely out of place on a Jeep. And that has been then attached to the stop switch or the brake switch, whatever you want to call it. So um, that's going to be a bit of a pain to get off because the screws which you have to loosen to get the block off are facing into the chassis and it's very tight. I don't quite know how we're going to manage to do it but we'll make an attempt. Hopefully we can get it off. If not, the new uh, wires might have to have the ring connectors, which like this here, they might have to have these pulled off and be wired into that plastic block, which I wouldn't like to do because that's not really ideal. But we'll see how it goes. That's a job for next week, basically, is to figure out what the hell's going on there. We'll get the new wire and harness in, make sure the brake lights and everything are working using these wires, and then we'll look at replacing the wires. So again, just so we have less variables when we're testing each thing. Okay then, so I think that's basically brought you up to speed as to where we are at with the Jeep. This still looks like there's a lot to go, but I think we're actually pretty close to getting this back on the road. There are a couple of little concessions that are going to have to be made temporarily to do with the uh, front indicators, but I've figured out how the whole system is going to be wired up now. I've got the junction block ready for the uh, trailer socket, the modern trailer socket that I have hidden in the back end, which I'll show you in the next video. Everything's prepped up, but before I did any more big jobs, I wanted to just show you where you're at before we start putting big bits like the wing and that back on and then you won't be able to really see what's going on. So the next thing I'll do is bung the air filter back in because I might as well get that out of the way, change the oil and get that back in. And then on the next video I make for you guys is going to be fitting the big main harness into the front end here, getting that all wired up into the switch, showing you how to connect that to a switch when you're running a Jeep like mine that's not factory but has all of the uh, blackout marker lights and stuff used as indicators instead because we've got some people online who have made some good videos, Scott Schiller in particular has made some brilliant wiring videos, but all his videos are how to do stuff for a factory wired Jeep. So if you've got something like mine, which is what a lot of them are like, where certain things are changed and you've got indicators and all that sort of stuff, I just thought I'd make a little video to help people who are maybe trying to figure out how to do them circuits. So that's it for this video, hopefully you enjoyed it. Please do like and subscribe and I'll see you soon.